Folks, as always, welcome back to YWC Football Talk. This is episode number 159, presented by BetStamp. For the best odds, for best odds shopping, go to BetStamp. Well, with me today, folks, you know him as the voice of Rogers Sports when it comes to fantasy, but also to the voice and heartbeat, I would say, of the Cleveland Browns Canadian fan base. Andy McNamara is back with me after a long, long hiatus. Andy, how are we feeling today? Oh, Griff, I'm doing okay, buddy. How are you? It's uh, been, a, been a weird week. It's been a bit of a weird week, but you know what? I can't complain. The weather's beautiful today in the greater Toronto area, and and, and the football offseason is truly, truly in high gear. Oh, man. Like, this is fascinating. Not just free agency, but the trades. Like, it, it's usually just big free agent deals, but the trades we're seeing are just absolutely wild. Exactly. It's all wild. It's all crazy. That's why I love doing a football podcast over any other sport, because, like, for as much as I love basketball, hockey, baseball – Football is that one sport where it's just a 12-month-a-year cycle. There's no stopping. No, it, it's true. There's If you actually track, like, the NFL calendar, there might be, like, a week in July or the end of June or something where there's nothing going on. Because otherwise, you are either leading up and anticipating to, to something, or it's happening, or it's the fallout from that. Like, it, it just doesn't stop. Exactly. That's that's the biggest thing with the NFL. It doesn't stop. It's just a never-ending cycle. Like now free agency and trades are still going on. But look, the draft's right around the corner. And there's a yeah. whole month of hype for that. Meanwhile, with like NHL, for example, I'm, we're Canadian. I have the oblig obligations to say the NHL. Right. You see that you see what's going on with the NHL and how their season goes. At the end of the season, boom, they have the draft, free agency, then everything goes quiet for about six weeks. NFL. There is that little weird quiet period between, I'd say, mini camp and training camp, but they're still talking about stuff. There's always still those what ifs, what ifs, those hypotheticals. Meanwhile, every other sport kind of goes into hibernation. Well, that's that's it. That's why the NFL is the the billion dollar machine that keeps going because you have to also fill content for the NFL Network, right? And so you're right. We have free agency. We have trades. We still have a couple quarterback spots to fill out. What's going to happen in Seattle? What's going to happen in uh, Carolina? Um, and then, yeah, it's the draft pro days are happening as well. So then you have the anticipation up to the draft in Las Vegas and then it's okay. Then the draft happens. And after that it's, well, how do these draft fits fit in? Then you have camp. Remember last year, Griff, when it was Jamar chase, <laughs> and yes. Jamar chase like, ah, oh, the stripe on the football thing. Wow. And, and he couldn't catch you. We're like, what's happening. And then it turns out. You know, he's an absolute rock star. So <laughs> that was weird. That, that's the thing. It was exactly. It's just, it's theater. It's pa it's passion. There's just so much that goes on to it. Cause even, yeah, once they go to mini camps and they see stuff, they're like, oh, hey, so there's like this. And like, little, like, that's the thing too. Little sound bites can make news. Obviously, for us, for Toronto, that's a little different for hockey because we turn hockey up to 10. Mm -hmm, but the NFL mm -hmm. as a league turned up to 10 year round. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and then like, look at, and the biggest offseason stories, it's a quarterback first league as we know. Yes. But it was really about what type of quarterback movement were we going to see? The surprise of Deshaun Watson um, turning down Cleveland, then owner Jimmy Haslam gave him 230 million guaranteed reasons to change his mind to go to Cleveland. And all of a sudden that shook up everything for all the other teams trying to get him. All of a sudden, Matt Ryan, who the Falcons were like, Matt, we love you. And then like, actually, we're going to try for Deshaun Watson. Okay, we love you again. He's like, get me out. And then he's in Indianapolis. Atlanta had to eat all that money. Most dead money having to be eaten by a franchise. 40 plus mil. Uh, then, then you got, all right, what's going to happen with Jimmy Garoppolo still? That's floating around. Seattle. right? It, doesn't it feel like Russell Wilson joined the Broncos a year ago? Like, it wasn't yeah. that long ago. Even so, Aaron Rodgers signing that yes. deal too. What is going to happen? Jameis Winston. The Saints wanted Deshaun. They're like, well, let's run it back with Jameis Winston and see, see what happens. So you still have some vacancies. You still have some moving pieces with Jimmy Garoppolo and Baker Mayfield, I think, really at the, the showcase piece um, um, of, of what should be the, the highest level of movement. Exactly, exactly. And I want, I want to get into that because the reason why I brought you here and what I'm calling the episode, it's called Watson. Like, I feel like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I just go, Watson, because <laughs> Deshaun Watson, obviously, I hope I spelled that right. I'm pretty sure I did. But the big thing with him, five years, $230 million guaranteed. But I know there's a lot of Cleveland fans. There's some people I've tapped. I've gotten, I'm, I'm sort of through you and through a couple other people. I'm yeah. like tapped into Brown's Twitter slightly. Um, also, there's another big content creator from Canada. She mainly does baseball. Her name's Jordan. She works for T 
I don't know if I should say it's on air. It's works for your rival. It's TSN. But Jordan, yes, yes, I know yes. Jordan. Yeah, Cleveland, us Cleveland fans stick together. Yes. So Jordan's cool. She's cool. Exactly, with me. Yeah. exactly. You guys stick together. You're a family. But okay. what's the vibe you're getting, and how are you feeling as a whole about this signing? And while we're at it, the Amari Cooper trade. You know what? Let's start with the positive with the Amari Cooper trade. Very happy with that because you get a true, uh, you, you you get a star. And, and while at this point in his career, I fear I feel Amari Cooper might be a better overall, let's say number two to maybe a rookie star, which you still could get if you're Cleveland, um, you immediately upgrade that room with that had next to nothing. Now there's rumors Jarvis Landry might want back and at a reduced rate. That would be fine. I still think you need to draft the guy. I personally still love Donovan Peoples-Jones. I think the upside for him is super high, plus the running back. So you have a lot of pieces there with being able to still add either in the second, you have two third round picks as well as a second round pick. You can still add pass rusher. Uh, uh, you can still add a, a wide receiver in that group to up that offense. So I like the Amari Cooper deal, obviously. Now, the Deshaun Watson. Uh, what I am hearing, feeling, seeing all over the place is a fan base torn. Because on the football side, wow, this is amazing. You have the best quarterback without a shadow of doubt, the most talented since Bernie Kosar. Uh, and and just raw talent wise, better than Bernie. You know, the guy, it's three Pro Bowls, 4,800 yards his last full year. But my goodness, football wise, let's go. Like, you immediately become a conference championship contender in a loaded AFC. Now, of course, it is not just a football situation. Yeah. There are, that's, that's where it gets really conflicted. And you, I, I can't blame any Browns fan who isn't super excited about this because there's still so many unknowns, right? Like, look, okay. He was, uh, uh, off of the, on the criminal side. Um, what about 22 civil? Like Griff, you know what? I'm not a legal expert at all. I would have to think if there's 22, he probably did something like, I, but, but I don't know. Deshaun Watson, maybe he gets cleared of everything. And it turns out to be the, if, if that's the case, then we are witnessing the biggest conspiracy in sports history. Because it looks like he did something. And for that case, it really has to dampen just the overall excitement and mood right now because you're getting somebody who may or may not have done some pretty bad things. Exactly. That's the big thing. We still don't know what exactly to expect. Uh, for all we know, these could just be settlements that are, look, he's in a room with a, a defense attorney that's basically uh, an attorney. He has his defense attorney. But where he could just go in there and get grilled by them, basically just say, hey, spill the truth. What really happened? We don't know what's fully going to happen with those civil suits yet. Like you or I, we're not legal experts. No. But from what it seems like for NFL circles, I still feel like it, you have Browns fans, like like you said. There's the positives. You know what? Great quarterback, generational talent, won a national championship at Clemson. But then you have the negatives where it's you have these 22 pending civil suits on the side of – of him, so we still have to have those figured out, even though yeah. he won't be charged criminally. Um, the whole big thing for me with this is just let's see how that plays out. I still feel like there is going to be punishment coming down from the NFL somewhere or another, so that's why. Like, I also had a thing on here saying Brown's outlook, and I'm just going to jump into that quickly. I feel like you can't truly label them as a contender yet because we don't know what the punishment yeah. is. Because, say, if he gets a six game suspension. And from that six games, you start two and four. Two and four is a really tough road to climb back from to get into that playoffs to win the division, especially when you have, look, Cincinnati's there. and They're there now. They're back. Um, Baltimore's another team I fully expect to bounce back. And mm -hmm. we don't know what we're going to get with Pittsburgh. I still say, I know he doesn't have a good track record, but I think if we can get average QB play out of Trubisky, they could potentially make a run. I don't know. But that's my big thing right now with the Browns is, Look, once the legal stuff is aside, let's worry about football then. For now, right. just get the legal stuff. I don't think football should be top priority for like for the dog pound at the current moment. But that that's just me as my outsider opinion. Right. Right. And and when when you look at the division, you're you're right. It's still a super tough division because as flawed of a quarterback that Mitch Trubisky is, his NFL record is 29 and 21. Yep. Two playoff appearances. That is undeniable. He can't be he might not be be perfect and he certainly isn't. But that's a winning record at the NFL level. So that is something. Uh, he's going to be a bridge for Pittsburgh. And the Steelers, no matter what, are always going to be a tough out. I think they're the worst team in the division. But oh, they're going too. to But they're going to be a tough out, Griff, yeah. right? The defense is still really good. They're going to, they've tried to revamp the line. They're going to try to ground and pound and win dirty. Uh, so they're not going to be an easy out at all. Uh, now you have Jacoby Brissett. The Browns upgraded at the backup position, anticipating 
NFL discipline to Deshaun Watson that he would miss X number of games. Really, it we, we are just guessing as far as what the punishment could be because one, we don't know the outcome of the civil cases. Two, the NFL is really weird with yeah. punishments, right? They can be like, okay, Kareem Hunt got eight games. Uh, uh, what did Tom Brady get for a deflated football? Four. Four. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that's like, <laughs> you know what Z- I mean? Uh, it's Z- all Z- over Gal- the place. Exactly. Z- Ezekiel Elliott got no uh, no acquittance. He got acquitted of all his domestic violence charges, and he still got six games from the NFL. That's why I, I still feel like punishment's coming down. I know people yeah. say, oh, he missed last year, but that was because it was his choice not to play last he year. He sat out, yes. And, and the other thing is, too, um, he – Let's bring up that. He set out a full year. I don't care how talented you are and he's young and his body's refreshed. You still got, are going to have to shake off some rust. So let's say he misses. Let's use the six number. So you miss six. You come back. going to take you, what, two, three games to get back into a rhythm after a full year plus? That's this, 23 games. In a new offense, right? In a new offense, that is something where you're going to have to be leaning on Jacoby Brissett, who they traded uh, Case Keem to Buffalo for a seventh round pick, get Jacoby Brissett, and Jacoby Brissett is, I think, at this point in his career, one of the higher end backups. Guy won four games for Miami last year. He can win you a ball game. He can be a stopgap. He can be he, he's he's serviceable enough to be able to keep you competitive. So let's say they go three and three. Deshaun comes back. Okay, you know that's 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 not bad. If you can keep five hundred with Jacoby Brissett, and then Watson comes back and. Then, then we're really up in the air again as far as uh, how much does he, how long does it take him to get back, and what type of reaction does he receive? Not just when he goes to home games in Cleveland, but abroad. Is he being booed everywhere? At this point, has he redeemed himself as much as possible? Has something come out where he's proven innocent or guilty or others? There's so many unknowns to this. So that's why, yeah, I, I'm with you. If I'm if I'm looking to bet, I don't know if I want to lay. Lay any money down on the on the Browns right now before we know all of this situation. Exactly. That's the other thing too. There's still that's the other thing. There's five and a half months to go until kickoff, so a lot yeah. can change between now and then. That's why. Yeah. That's why if your team's not doing well in free agency, don't freak out at the current moment. You can freak out in the summertime if nothing's <laughs> happened. But for now, freaking out's not a. It's not. You got the draft not, too. Exactly. You got the draft. A spectacle. Which, if you folks are looking to go to the draft, I know Andy's Ooh. got some great info on that. Oh. Um, but we'll talk about that later, uh, just because of our limited time. But a quick question I wanted to ask you from, uh, well, I'm not going to say just a fan, but it's the fan of YWC Football Talk. Uh, Randy Oscar, shout out Randy. He wanted to know, because look, you're the fantasy guy after all. I know it's early, but 2022 fantasy football, who are you looking at so far as a player you really like? Yeah, love love Randy, and uh, absolutely. Um, if now, This, of course, could change because we still have the whole draft to go, yeah. right? Depends on who goes where and this and this and this. But if we're looking at the current NFL draft, so for current players, not including draft picks, number one overall pick to me without a shadow of a doubt, no questions asked to Jonathan Taylor of the Colts. Period. Yeah. Absolute no question. Think about it this way too. You upgrade a quarterback with Matt Ryan. Say what you want about him. The dude has a star offensive line. He's still young enough. He still has an arm. And all the pressure is not going to be on him. So guess what? You can give it to Jonathan Taylor and enjoy your life behind that offensive line. Jonathan Taylor is the first overall pick. Um, I'm going to downgrade Derrick Henry probably to a maybe just outside that tier. Eh, I won't say to maybe in that three, four spot. Um, if I have a top, like if I'm picking, let's say number four, Griff, I want Derrick Henry to be gone because I don't know if I want him right now. This is this the start? of the decline from that injury with his age, with the mountain of workload, or is it a blip and he comes back and the dude balls out again? Th- th- that's where the question comes in. So I would feel more comfortable. I'm looking at the top two picks. I would say Jonathan Taylor. I'm going to take Eckler, uh, number two. And then we really have to start to look at where do you value Cooper Cup? This is interesting because think of it this way. Cooper Cup can still have a phenomenal year and still fantasy-wise, drastically underperformed from what he did this year, which is still means he's a WR1, but how high do you go get him? Where do you take him? Like, And then where do you where do you take that first uh, receiver? Where do you go at tight end with the Travis Kelsey after a little bit of a down year? You're not taking Christian McCaffrey anymore in the in the top, uh, top five. I'm not. I'm certainly not with those injuries. So you look at a Najee Harris maybe behind – uh, a better Pittsburgh offensive line. Dalvin Cook, you know, is going to miss a couple games. You know it. 
That's what yeah. he does. He's going to miss a couple games. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. So you got a lot of pieces, a lot of weapons still cooking. Exactly. Like the guys I like personally, and even too for Indy, I really like getting a guy in later rounds, like say a Moali Cox with Matt Ryan, or mm, even to I like Michael, the Black, man. Michael Pittman Jr. as well. Um, for me, I would go, I like that. Jonathan Taylor is my RB1, Austin Eckler. Um, and then you start going down the pipeline, you know, the Derrick Henrys, the Alvin Kamaras. But I like your Cooper Cup conundrum. I still, I feel like a lot of people are going to be shooting for Devonte Adams still at the top to be the mm. RB one, but I'm I like it for Vegas. I just I'm still a little bullish on Derek Carr, so I don't know if I'm going to jump for him. Uh, Travis Kelsey still tight end one for me. I think you have Travis Kelsey. Um, I actually have Dawson Knox as my tight end too. I think Ooh. the more Josh Allen develops, uh, Dawson Knox he was great last year for fantasy. He was really good waiver wire pickup. Um, but as it goes for the wide receivers, I would say, look. I'd go cup one just because of the hype being there. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the guys, Devontae Adams, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, um, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm a little skeptical on because of that. So because of injuries and everything. So I'd probably go after those guys. Then I'd look at like, you know, the Stefan Diggs. But my biggest advice for people that I've taken now with fantasy going forward, if you pick at, say, I don't know, if you're in a 10-person league and you're picking at anywhere after seven, that's when I think, look, take a shot at a tight end or a wide receiver as your first and second round picks. Because, look, you can get the running backs to fill the stock gaps later once everyone panics and realizes, look, the good tight ends and receivers are gone. Yep, yep, I agree. If you're picking close to that, you know, 10-12 league between seven and down, uh, all the great running backs, the, the sure thing running backs are going to be gone. Yep. So you might as well get the best available position player outside of that, not being a quarterback, right? As you said, tight end is scarce. What is, what is Darren Waller's role? going to be that's what's so fascinating to me what is darren waller with Devontae adams because griff this could go a couple ways yeah it could really now darren waller went healthy my goodness was a star does this free him up to get even more what does it do for Devontae adams how do you distribute the football from Derek carr who we saw like him or not has been able to put up a ton of points for the raiders and they're going to be expecting to throw a lot more that's the spot where I think you have to look at because last year he was the the consensus number two tight end off the board. Does it stay that way or does it have to change to maybe like you said a Dawson Knox? I just like Dawson Knox just because of the consistency and the proven track record with me personally. Mm -hmm. um, the, I do like your pick though as well. Another guy I like from the AFC West, if you want a guy for your flex role, would be Juju Smith Schuster going to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be that guy that's going to get those chump those like chunk passes and you know just those simple slant routes, just simple simple 10 yard passes here and there. So if you want a guy later in the draft to go in the flex or go be a bench receiver, I'd look at him. I like Juju in that role. Like you said, I think that's going to be a massive upgrade over a Sammy Watkins. Uh, you know who I'm bullish on? Not Allen Robinson in LA, in LA, my guy, Van Jefferson, Van Jefferson grip. I'm telling you. Okay. Van Jefferson is the one people are going to be leaping out of there to get Cooper cup. Rightfully so. Allen Robinson next. Yes. And I'm sure he'll have a nice year. I think it is Van Jefferson. That guy, he was banged up a little bit. But man, that dude, he's that is, by the way, a really big and fast wide receiver core all across LA. Matt Stafford got extended, could just throw that sucker up. I think Van Jefferson is going to be the one that can get people into the playoffs and be that later pick that you kind of forget about. Don't forget about Van Jefferson, folks. And also, don't forget about Cam Akers as well. I think we're going to see a yeah. good season out of him this coming year. Yeah, yeah. Don't and yeah, and people are like, oh, he looks slow in the super guy just had uh, came off of the Achilles, working his way back. Cam Akers, I think, is gonna be just fine. And I agree. I think that's gonna be you should be looking to get a whole bunch of LA Rams on your roster. And also, too, one guy I'm looking at to have a bounce back potentially because he's gonna be two years removed from his ACL is actually uh Saquon Barkley. I'm not saying go out and grab him, but I'm Ooh. saying if he falls down the if he falls down the ladder a little bit. Maybe look at it for like your RB two or RB three option. I'm not saying RB one. It's spicy. It's a spicy take right now. It's spicy. It's just something I'm thinking about because I look at it where last year was kind of the recover, like the year where he's looking to get his footing back. I think this year is that year he can kind of like you know bounce back when no one expects it. But then again, it could be that piece where you're like, hey, you know what? I have this sure thing, and then by our Thanksgiving, you're regretting it. Well, and with Saquon, it, it's not just. One knee injury, it's multiple. And then there was like an ankle, right? And then it's like, okay, this guy is, here's the difference to me between him and let's say Christian McCaffrey, who is, is going to fall because of the injury stuff. 
Whenever Christian McCaffrey steps back on the field from the first snap, the dude balls out. It might only be for a quarter, but it, he balls out. Saquon felt like he lost some burst. Yeah. Also, the Giants really suck. So it's like, where, where do we see Saquon Barkley? I'll put it this way. I want two... I want my RB1 and RB2 to be comfortable with. And if Saquon's sitting there somewhere late, then I'll take a flyer on him. But man, I just personally, I see what you're saying, but personally, I, I would want a, a different RB2 and, and maybe as like a depth if he's there. I think someone's going to, he's going to go early enough in drafts just because of name recognition though. Yeah, that's, that's what I feel. I'm just saying like, look, it's one of those things where it's a guy where you look at potential ca- candidates for standing out. Yeah, um, and yeah. Then the only- Player that I love for bounce back candidates, excuse me, but for standout candidates, I love Almond Ross and Brown personally. Oh, that dude. Oh, he got me to the finals. He got me to the finals of a fantasy league, Griff. Oh, man. I picked him up off of waivers. Oh, I forgot. I wrote about him twice in my Sportsnet weekly waiver wire articles. I forget the weeks now, but I got him like two weeks before it was cool. And that dude balled out. Oh, man. This guy showcased himself as being phenomenal. The Lions should get marginally better around around different areas and at least he showcased himself that he is going to he should be a centerpiece of that offense so i think he will be he should be and he is versatile you can line him outside inside and we know jared goff and he doesn't he likes to dink and dunk well st brown can do that for you too and i don't think the presence of a tj hawkinson hinders him that much because you can use hawkinson in a different way and the same thing too you also have swift there um, yeah. before, before we go, just because I know you're a very uh, tight on time and everything, I have a hot take right now for where I, a team I could see going after Baker Mayfield, and okay. it is the Detroit Lions. I think – you, you think about it. You can – I know Jared Goff's on a big contract, but you take a flyer on a guy like uh, – you take a, a flyer on a Baker Mayfield, I think you get him working with a Dan Campbell. Because I'm looking at all these other teams, mm. like, you know, who else is left? Like Carolina and stuff. I just – Carolina, Carolina think, and Seattle. That's it. Okay. Carolina and Seattle, and those are two teams where I'm like, okay, Seattle it reminds me right now of a team that like you need to rebuild, but they don't want to admit it. And then yeah. Carolina is another one where the offensive line's horrible, and like just there's there's still a work in progress. But with Detroit, I think if you get the right quarterback in there, look, they can start to make strides in the next few years. I'm not saying 2022, but I think if you give Baker a coach who's really going to be on his case about performing well, and a guy that like can get him to buy into a system like Dan Campbell has with so many Lions. I, it's a spicy take, but I think it's a place where he could potentially rejuvenate his career. With a strong running game, with uh, with DeAndre Swift, you know why that makes really a good lot online. Of, you, exactly, and you know why that makes even more sense, Griff. Guess why? what? The senior, I forget his exact title, senior executive. Uh, oh, John Dorsey. John Dorsey, the man who drafted, hey buddy boy, who drafted Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, is an advisor to the Lions, so you can connect those dots. He loved Baker and. Hey, if you have him in there, it makes sense. Then you just have to think about, okay, what do you do uh, with Jared Goff? And do we see an even crazier carousel? Maybe they're like, okay, we want Baker. And then Goff's off to Seattle or something. Who knows? Go back to the West Coast. I don't know. It's the chaos of the NFL offseason. Love it. it's, it's what it is. We love it. We love absolutely it. love it. Well, anyway, guys, it's been a blast. I know, Andy, you got to get out of here, so I'm going to wrap this thing up. But – Thank you very much for coming on once again. Uh, look, Baker Mayfield right now, it's like a – I wish he had burst into uh, Barry's office and just trashed it like Brian Drew did when he found yes. out they were going to get Callahan. But I was going to call this episode – if you guys hadn't gotten Watson, I would have called this episode like the Brian Drew effect, but I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring him bring him back. I know it has so many draft day similarities, except uh, Andrew Barry did not get David Putney. Exactly. No, <laughs> David goddamn Putney. Yeah, Putney just um, like, feel like it. Yeah, but no, anyway, guys, it's been a blast today. I'll have to get you back before the draft. We're going to have to eat our pancakes. We're going to have to have a fun time. Oh, yeah, man. Pancakes on draft day, baby. Watch the movie. It's perfect. I I, I know it's it's not the best movie in the world, but look, for the NFL draft, it's just a perfect movie. Just watch it sometime between now and April 28th. But anyway, guys, that's been it for episode number 159. I will see you guys later this week for more NFL talk and NFL free agency talk. Have a good one, everybody.